Ming, uh, you are, of course, based in Singapore, which just announced rare unilateral sanctions on Russia. What do you think of Singapore's response so far and how the world community is really rallying against Russia? Hey, Emily. First of all, thank you for, uh, very much for having me on here. Um, it, it goes without saying that our hearts um, just absolutely go out to everyone that's been affected. Um, we do have a few grabbers that's also been affected in the region, and we're doing everything that we can. Um, I would say you're absolutely right. The COVID impact has been severe. Um, we're seeing potential impacts uh, from a global basis. And, and frankly, we're, and despite that, I think we feel very um, happy with a lot of the performance that we've achieved. Um, in spite of all the city lockdowns and stuff, in spite of all the macro turmoil, I think 2021 was our best year ever. Uh, we exceeded guidance um, on GMV. Revenues grew by 44%, and we delivered against our EBITDA uh, guidance. Um, in terms of Southeast Asia, it's clear that our super app strategy is working. Um, our users are spending more. Uh, customers from our 2016 cohort are now spending close to five times what they spent when they first joined Grab. And our retention rates are now up to 74% for customers that use three or more services from Grab. Um, we are generating solid margins and mobility, and we are focused on building value over the long term um, and just really unlocking the tremendous market opportunity that we see here. And we are convicted that the position that we've taken in our strategy as the only regional super app is the right one for us. How are you thinking about delivery and ride hailing workers in Southeast Asia at this time? Many of them are part time workers. They have little rights. You know, how are you factoring that into the future of the company? Well, the, the key for us has always been around how do we create true economic empowerment for micro entrepreneurs uh, across Southeast Asia. And these micro entrepreneurs certainly include our driver partners, it includes many of the restaurant partners uh, that we work with in food delivery. And, and the key for us is how do we provide the largest income opportunities for drivers, for merchants um, over time? And the key aspect for that is executing on our super app strategy. It's about cross-sell, um, selling multiple services to our consumers and over time generating increased wallet share for our consumers. And I think that's the best way for us to continue empowering um, economic stability for the region here. Now, the war in Ukraine is only escalating. As we've been discussing, there's concern it could lead to rising food prices. It'll certainly make supply chain issues potentially worse. How is Grab potentially impacted by that and preparing for that? Yeah, well, we're obviously um, monitoring the situation pretty closely. It's a little bit too early to see, uh, to really tell how the effects will ripple through Southeast Asia. Uh, we're monitoring gas prices, um, oil prices, as it relates to our drivers, because that certainly hits the driver P&Ls in a very direct way. We're also monitoring uh, food costs and the effects of inflation um, across uh, Southeast Asia. But if I just step back for a second, the, the real key for us as a platform is how do we provide the lowest cost services to our merchants, our drivers, and to our consumers? And ultimately, if we're able to do that, then I think the, the sustainability will be on the platform. I just want to give, give a quick example. Um, when you look at our total uh, segment adjusted EBITDA margins, we've improved those by 50% from 2020 to 2021. Uh, from a minus 2% um, loss in 2020 to minus 1% in 2021. And I think a large part of that is by driving continued cost reductions in the platform, which ultimately we then share with all of our partners, restaurants, and drivers.